And with us in the studio now for our Your Health segment is Dr. Michael Jablonover, Clinical Assistant Professor of Medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Chief Executive Officer of the University of Maryland Rehabilitation and Orthopedic Institute. And Mandy Krywana, Senior Physical Therapist at the University of Maryland Rehabilitation and Orthopedic Institute. Thanks to both of you for being with us. A pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having Let's me. Let's start with some of the basics on rehabilitation. And obviously we have a device here we want to talk about, but after some somebody is injured or, or has a stroke, is there a window of time for maximum recovery? Well, we think actually the earliest that someone enters into acute rehabilitation, the better. And uh, just for the audience, I would add that acute rehabilitation is really a medically based, comprehensive, multidisciplinary approach towards those individuals who have suffered significant trauma. As you said, Jeff, perhaps a stroke, a traumatic brain injury, a spinal cord injury, major orthopedic injuries or surgery. And the sooner that we can actually move them from an acute care setting into the post-acute or acute rehab hospital, the better off they are. And, and Mandy, in, in your practice, wh what's the typical goal and, and what's the typical time frame for somebody? Well, I'm on the stroke unit, so we're working with the neurological population. Um, what we do is we evaluate patients, we ask them what their goals are, and then we determine a length of stay with the whole team, as Dr. Jablonovar stated. So um, after that, we really work towards those goals that the patients have set to really maximize their overall recovery. How long have you been at this? 10 years. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Have, have things changed much in 10 years? I would argue, if I could, that one of the aspects that has changed fairly significantly in the field is the adoption of uh, high power technology. In the old days, we used to say that uh, rehabilitation was essentially high touch, high personal touch, but low tech. And over the past 10 years or so, that's really migrated more to the point now where we are not just high touch, but high tech as well. And the advent and really the advances in robotics and biomechanical engineering and bionics has really propelled the, the field forward. Mandy, the device in front of you looks like a bionic arm, I suppose. What, what is that? Yeah, so I brought this with me. It's one of the few devices that is portable to bring here, but this is a hand rehabilitation system. So what it is, is it delivers low level electrical stimulation um, to the muscles in the hand and the forearm. So it activates the nerves that control the muscles. So you can do more functional activities with it, like reaching for an object. So if I were reaching for this cup, grasping, um, opening and closing the hand. So the patient could do more functional activities while receiving the electrical stimulation. Is it meant to be a permanent assistive device or is it something that helps during the rehab phase? It helps during the rehab phase, but there are also patients that take devices like this home for practice after their outpatient has been discontinued. And there's also a similar one for the leg um, that helps with what's called drop foot. So. Um, if you can't lift your toes up when you're walking, that can be a safety hazard. You could trip and fall, or it would slow down your walking. So with this device, it provides electrical stimulation and lifts your toes up. Um, and there's also one that controls the muscles of the knee, too. You know, you hear so many stories about people with rehabilitation needs for various things who run up against the insurance company at some point, that uh, they're making progress and, and feel they need a few more months or whatever the time frame is. The insurance company pushes back on that. How often does that come up? Well, we encounter that to some degree, and it depends on the individual insurance company, of course, or if it's a federal or state payer. But when it does, uh, our physicians, our therapists, our nurses really try, along with our case managers, uh, who are specialized nurses who help manage the flow of the patient through the hospital, they make a very strong case and will sometimes elevate that to the medical director of the insurance company if it's truly thought, and usually is, uh, that continued rehabilitation, particularly in hospital, will provide long-lasting benefit. We have some video of a, a weight support system that is used in certain rehabilitation settings. You can see it behind you there. Just what are we looking at? So that's a robotic assisted walking system. So what you're seeing is it takes the patient, well, first of all, it's over a treadmill, and it takes the patient through a normal walking pattern. So you could see it's moving the legs in a normal walking pattern. The um, so the speed of the treadmill can be increased or decreased, and it's kind of like pre-programmed for each individual patient. But in, in the hopes that that repetitive walking 
can help normalize their normal walking pattern off of the treadmill. And, and for what sorts of, of injuries or, or conditions? Spinal cord injury, stroke, multiple sclerosis, anybody that has an abnormal walking pattern and meets the criteria too. I, I'm, I'm so interested in the, in the psychology of this um, from a couple of angles. One, the, the people who work in the field every day and, and I guess you get to see incremental progress. You get to see somebody at the beginning of the process, at the end of the process. Um, but at the same time, there's also this, this sadly constant parade of people in need of your services. Right. Well, you know, it's a really vulnerable time for these people. Most of their injuries were not planned. So, you know, I would say the biggest thing is getting them up and moving faster and challenging them as much as we possibly can. And with the use of this technology, it's allowed us to do that. Let's take a call from Harford County. This is Rehan uh, calling from Harford. Sir, go ahead. Yeah, she showed the device for the person who has a hand injury, and she said that it will be easier for somebody to pick up uh, anything. So every time they need to pick up, do they have to put it on? Thanks very much. Well, not necessarily. So it's used in the rehabilitation process. And what we're hoping is, is that with the electrical stimulation and that repetitive practice, that they'll eventually be able to do that task more independently. So initially it may start off practicing that specific task and then transition to other functional activities that people have to do in everyday life. I asked about this psychology from a provider standpoint, from a patient standpoint. As, as Mandy mentioned, these are people largely didn't expect to, to be in this situation. Major life adjustment uh, and, and, and rehab clearly you know, can be tedious. I'm sure you make it a lot of fun, um, <laughs> but, but the, the challenge and, and you know, uh, admire people who, who uh, successfully go through it. Talk a little about the, those challenges. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, and uh, Mandy alluded to this earlier. These are individuals who didn't plan on trauma. They come in, they're very vulnerable, probably the most vulnerable state that they've ever experienced. And I think part of what we try to do in the field is, number one, try to provide a multidisciplinary approach, a holistic approach, keeping in mind that much of the trauma has been physical, but at the same time, very much emotional and psychological as well, if not cognitive, intellectual functioning. So there's a team approach towards trying to address all of those issues simultaneously, and it's an integrated, coordinated approach. Uh, but on top of that, too, I think it's important to manage expectations for the individual and their family uh, because most of the patients who have moved into an acute rehabilitation setting have come from another hospital. They've gone through either a long hospitalization or perhaps something shorter, but typically you'll see more immediate returns, immediate changes. As you said earlier, in acute rehabilitation, the change is incremental, and we encourage patients to actually exercise patients, so to speak, and to know that the progress will take longer periods of time, but they need to actually keep that in mind as they move forward. Let's take a call from uh, Lori in Baltimore County. Lori, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Yes, I'm a, a veteran, and I'm 100% disabled. How would I get into to use your service with local Matt? Lori, thanks for the phone call. Best way to reach you guys? The best way to reach us, uh, certainly the, the main number is 410-448-2500, and uh, the individual can be directed actually to our spinal cord unit uh, or our chief of rehabilitation's office as well. And if somebody was looking that up online, start at University of Maryland Medical. They could actually go to uh, our, our website has now changed. Uh, mm -hmm. We formerly uh, were called Kernan. Now we're the University of Maryland Rehabilitation Orthopedic Institute. You go to the website there and you'll actually find information on the locomat on spinal cord injury and stroke, and that will direct an individual to that, that point. Does, does there come a point where somebody's, say, a year out, 18 months out from, from the incident, and, and future gains are going to be limited? The gains may be limited, but there are a lot of studies that show that with continued practice, people can still make gains that improve their quality of life. And, and what are you looking forward to in the next couple of years? That's a terrific question. We're looking to see further advancement, uh, certainly on the technological areas, as, as again, 
uh, biomedical engineering really progresses, but there's a lot of other research too across the spectrum in traumatic brain injury, in stroke, in spinal cord uh, trauma that we really haven't even been able to peel back yet. And I think there's going to be quite a bit of advancement in the next decade or so around all of those areas with the ultimate goal of providing the maximum functionality and independence to the individuals who have been afflicted. That's a great place to leave it. I want to thank both of you for being with us. Thank we you. Thank appreciate you very much. your time tonight. Your health segments are a co production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. 